we'll go to our last talk, keynote talk today. That is uh, from uh, Pierre Monton, Pierre Monlon. Pierre Monlon, I, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Is I'm my presentation to... correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to set my screen. Okay. Uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Pierre Mon Monlon. And um, Dr. Monlon is a principal research scientist at Zillow Group. And he has published many influential papers and uh, commonly used libraries and like OpenMVG. And he's a creator of OpenMVG, which means here, MVG means multi-view geometry, uh, which is the mo one of the most uh, widely used open source 3D reconstruction toolbox. Um, Pearson obtained his PhD in computer science uh, from University of Paris East on his later work. Uh, he later worked at Autodesk, which is also a 3D reconstruction company, and the Blanty system on large scale recon 3D reconstructions. Uh, at Zillow, Pierre helped to develop Zillow 3D room, uh, home, 3D home product, which is an immersive uh, real, estate, uh, real estate visualization tool built around 3D, 360 degree uh, imaging. His recent work includes 360 imaging for indoor uh, reconstruction and the implementation of the 360 degree uh, structure for motion and multi-view theory um, based on open uh, MVG and open MVS he, he has already developed for those open source um, uh, framework. And I believe many of you, you guys have already used um, uh, Zillow's product when you try to find a room, for try to find a, a apartment or house. And uh, part of the, those work uh, coming from Dr. Pierre, uh, Pierre Mollen's uh, research. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Mollen to give us uh, the talk to introduce his work. Dr. Mollen, you can go ahead. You, I think you are muted. Oh yeah, now it should be working. Okay, do now you, I can hear you, yes. Yeah. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. hello everyone. Uh, thank you for your introduction and your invitation to speak at this workshop uh, focused on visual localization and reconstruction. My name is Pierre and I'm working at Zillow uh, as a scientist. Uh, Zillow is a real estate uh, US based company. I will speak today about the open source project called OpenMVG that I created uh, in 2013 and leverage this opportunity today to speak about uh, OpenMVG in a retrospective mode. Uh, so let's go over the agenda first. Uh, so first I will speak about the genesis of the project, how it was created and the context that allowed me to create it. I will then present the OpenMVG project and talk about its flexibility, how to create pipelines, and uh, since we are speaking about uh, retrospective, I will use this uh, unique opportunity to speak about the challenges and opportunities uh, that OpenFVG is facing today and showcase how the community is using the project. I will then conclude and um, have the Q&A session. Uh, so first for OpenFVG, all started with a dream um, that I got uh, from a long time. Uh, so the dream was to create uh, an open source project uh, to create a patent-free and permissive library for 3D reconstruction. I want to create a framework to foster academia and industry to collaborate and use uh, the 3D reconstruction technology uh, to just showcase how we can do this. So if we look about the context and the timeline, um, everything starts into uh, 2008. Uh, I was a, a programmer at this time. I was doing some contribution to open source project called LibMV and LibMV was a, a library to do match moving, uh, meaning it was to do slam uh, for the movie industry. And then I, I was able to finally do the research and start my PhD in collaboration with Micros and Université Paris-Est. And during this PhD, I was able to really start and build an OpenMVG uh, library. If we look also about the context, I was very lucky because at this time, uh, two big libraries came out uh, and were able to allow me to do really OpenMVG in a permissive way. Uh, the first project was Ceres Solver to do bundle adjustment. And the second one was to do uh, feature extraction uh, with Akaze in a with a permissive license. 
if we look about the context also, uh, many paper was really inspiring for me at this time. And uh, I was able to leverage all the knowledge of those paper uh, to bring new things uh, for the SFM community. And if we look also to the context, uh, we see that there is already some uh, solutions that were uh, able to extract either SIFT features, for example, but it was patented. So it's like you cannot use this to make a permissive libraries. Uh, and Bundler was here also a, a project that a lot of researchers was using, uh, but this code was released under GPL license. So meaning that you cannot use this uh, with a permissive license. So that's why I created OpenMVG to have something permissive that anyone can use without restriction. And when I started this stream, uh, I tried to set myself some rules uh, to keep as a motivation for the project and to move forward. Uh, first, I define a mission, uh, try to share uh, knowledge to the community. Then I create a vision uh, to ease reproducibility research and allow our community to use, modify, and play with accurate implementation of the most relevant algorithm of the field. And then I try to use a credo uh, to make things simple and easy to understand and maintain by all of us. So let's say that somehow I want to be in favor of a easy learning curve rather than some code that is fast, but that you cannot understand or modify later. How hard could it be to just create a library from scratch uh, to do SFM? So on one side, we can say it's easy because there is a lot of things that you can do uh, with uh, linear formulation. So meaning that you can do triangulation, rotation averaging, uh, essential matrix, fundamental matrix with uh, linear formulation. So it's very easy to code and uh, somehow SVD is your best friend to do that. But then you realize that by plugging, plugging things together, it's not as easy as you thought. And you have to realize that you need to do robust estimation, you need to deal with optimization, you need to do with minimal solvers to have better speed and accuracy in some geometric configuration. And finally, at the end, you want also to create uh, an API that allow users to just use your code in an easy way, or allow yourself to just plug new stuff later on. And doing those things is not really easy. As you see, um, it took a lot of iteration. I started OpenMVG in 2013. Now we are at version 1.6. And the project is still active. Uh, it's running since a long time. And I just put a sun here uh, to show uh, something that really was a turnover in the project and really empower the project today. I I'm going to speak about that later on. As you can guess, uh, getting from version 0 0.1 to version 1.6, uh, 1.6 was quite a lot of work. Uh, you can see here a lot of um, non-exhaustive list of papers that have been implemented in OpenMVG. For your information, the bold papers are the contribution I brought to the community during my PhD. So you can see that I, we implemented a lot of things related to minimal solvers, triangulation, robust estimation, global structure for motion, and tracking. If I want you to remember things about the project, first is when I started it, uh, I got the right context uh, to create it during uh, my PhD, and then um, we add many things to the project. Uh, but one main key point was when I created the SFM data container in the project. It's where you see the sun in this picture. I'm going to explain later why it was a, a key element in this process. Uh, also, you can see here that some fun project was added, like the support in the, of spherical cameras uh, in 2018, um, or that you can use uh, also OpenMVG uh, on IRM uh, platform. So meaning that you can use OpenMVG on iOS or Android phones. So now we see that we have a lot of things in the project, but we don't really know how to use it. So now let's speak about OpenMVG and its framework and discover how you could use it for your own purpose. Uh, so open image is a framework, so meaning that you can build a pipeline uh, where you are connecting together multiple binaries to achieve the goal you want. For, for example, SFM, localization, or others that you can build yourself. In order to build uh, the open MVG library, I rely on three abstraction layers. One abstraction layer is for the IO, the input output, uh, meaning that it's just dealing with data. The second one is a data layer, meaning that you have some data on disk, but you want to load them and play with them um, to do interaction. 
And finally, you need to have an um, algorithm uh, implemented uh, to deal and uh, mixing all those data together. And this is the implementation layer. It's where the main code core is living. If you look about some concept, um, there is many in OpenMVG. You can see there is a lot of libraries uh, like to deal with images, features, matching, tracking, etc. Also small library, you can use them independently or you can just mix them together uh, to do SFM. Abstraction and features and ma matches are handled with the data provider interface that you can see on top. And then uh, you can use those data provider to just integrate your own data in the open image framework, but just you just have to add your own custom layer to do that. So now let's look about how to use OpenMVG and deal with this um, um, SFM data container uh, to build pipelines. So SFM data is a kind of backbone where you can just build your custom pipeline on top of it. So if you want to remember something about OpenMVG, I want to say that you have to remember this. Um, this is the main thing in OpenMVG that uh, allow us to do everything we do today. Uh, this SFM data container is an interoperable um, data structure, and it allows to store the relationship between your images, camera intrinsic and extrinsic, and the same visibility. The nice things about this data structure is like we can store it as a JSON blob, as a binary file, or an XML file. And uh, why we do this is just because it brings flexibility for speed and transparency for the user. So meaning you can use it with the format you want where you need. So for example, uh, you can build a pipeline on top of this. So meaning that first you're going to uh, just initialize your scene. So meaning you have some image as input and you're going to say I'm using 10 images with a pinhole camera model and I'm going to add 20 camera, uh, 20 image with a spherical camera. So you, it's just an initialization of the process. It can be done in Python, in C++ as you want because you can manipulate this uh, SFM data uh, backbone um, just as a JSON blob or a binary file. Then you want to do some processing. So you're going to read uh, from this file and you're going to do SFM or localization to just update some information about the camera poses or the visibility of the features and the 3D points of the scene. Then when it's done, you can say, okay, now I'm going to export or evaluate uh, the data. So meaning that for example, you can export the data to, uh, to evaluate the quality to some GT data set or just export to a different uh, multiple view stereo framework to compute a dense one cloud or a mesh. Now that you know that the SFM data container is easy and you can interact with it, uh, let's look at some example um, of manipulation in OpenMVG. So for example, here it's an example when you're gonna do 3D construction and then use this scene to do localization of new images. So from the left to the right, you can see that first you're going to use some binaries and combine them together on top of the backbone that is the SFM data container. So first you're going to link cameras, uh, image and model together. You're going to compute features, compute matches, and then do structure from motion. Once you have the output of structure from motion, you can say, okay, now I want to localize some image on top of it. And so this image could be new image as rectilinear image or 360 image. But it's not all, like it's a pipeline. So you can do many, many things. You can just uh, set some known camera poses as input with the language of your choice because you can use this SFM data container as a JSON blob and just uh, use Python or C++ to initialize uh, this file. And after you can say, okay, I'm gonna compute features and then uh, triangulate the point co corresponding to the scene uh, by using this uh, compute structure binary. And this compute structure binary can do either triangulation of a match file, so meaning that features that have been matched, or just um, look for features along the epipolar line. Now let's say that you want to do something and um, just mix features that are from different type. So meaning that you can say, okay, I we're going to do studio construction with shift features in the first place. And then I'm going to use the output of the SFM and just triangulate features from another kind. So here, for example, I'm going to compute Akaze feature in the second step and just triangulate the feature from Akaze given the S, uh, camera poses I found uh, with SIFT. It's a very uh, simple process. 
And since it's a pipeline, it's important to know uh, what is the input and what is the output you can manipulate. Uh, and to ease uh, the usage of the library, uh, we added some uh, interface to just import some data sets that exist in the community and to export to other software of the community uh, to have a kind of transparency with the community. So meaning that you can use ETH 3D data sets as input and just export them directly to PMBS or OpenMBS to compute uh, a 3D point cloud if you want. Or you can just import the data sets and just compute SFM with OpenMVG and directly compute the quality of the reconstruction uh, to know if the camera poses are very close or very far. Uh, I will just do a side note um, about OpenMVG SFM pipeline. Uh, to just illustrate what is different uh, from what was existing before. Uh, for the incremental SFM pipeline, uh, what was introduced with OpenMEG uh, was to use uh, a noise adaptive robust multiple view geometry estimation. So meaning that in most of the pipeline, uh, people are using RONSAC, and for RONSAC, you need to set up a threshold. And you don't know which threshold to use. So you can say, okay, I'm going to use four pixels for this data set. I'm going to use six pixels for this data set. But somehow you never know how to choose this threshold to be the best one for your data set. Uh, and with AC run sites that we are using in OpenMVG, uh, this threshold adaptation is done automatically uh, with statistics computation. And the thing that was introduced in OpenMVG is to be able to start the SFM process in an incremental way uh, with n views. So meaning that often you start with only two views and it could be very unstable because you don't know which two images to choose. And in OpenMVG, we introduce a method to um, start the reconstruction with n views, and it's often more stable. For the global SFM pipeline, uh, what was new compared to the previous work was to use image triplets uh, to enhance rotation averaging robustness and to do a convex translation using triplets. And as you can see, I put a side note uh, because, like a lot of global algorithms, are not really used today for large scale SFM. Uh, but now they start to be used for SLAM and produce a very nice uh, uh, initialization. So now let's take a look to the challenges and opportunities uh, that the OpenMVG project is um, facing on. And here you can see some reconstruction uh, made with a, a 360 camera, for example. So first for the challenges or opportunities, it's hard to gather feedback. Uh, so for us, we just made a survey to the community last year, and we were able to gather a representat representative set of 50 answers. And at the result of this survey, we were very glad to see that the community is using OpenMVG since a long time. Most of our users are using it since more than three years. So it's really a commitment, and we were really happy to see that. It also gave us some meaningful information about the size of the data set or the SFM pipelines that the community is using. And now we see that people start to use more than 1K images to just reconstruct an object or reconstruct a building. And often people just use to choose uh, the incremental SFM pipeline because it seems to be the most accurate and the most stable in average. And we were also very surprised by the fact that one third of our community is able to leverage OpenMVG and to create its own uh, custom pipeline. So it's something that I list first. It was a dream, try to empower the community and just share knowledge. And as a result, we see that now one third of the community is building their own pipeline on top of OpenMVG. So I think my dream is achieved somehow. I was able to just provide code and enable others to do something stronger. We found also interesting to see what was the request of the community. Uh, we saw that without surprise that somehow people want to do uh, real-time reconstruction. So meaning that SLAM is a a lot of interest and that dealing with laser or LIDAR is also of interest. Uh, one interest is also along speed. Uh, so meaning that everyone wants things to be computed very quickly. Uh, for the moment, OpenMVG uh, focus more on accuracy uh, rather than speed. So it's something that you can help uh, and gather in the project and just help us to, to be faster. If we look about opportunities in a general way, here, it's something that I want everyone to remember because those points could be true for every project uh, you're going to start or you want to contribute to. Uh, so first, what, what is very important is awareness. So you need to be known and you need to be used. So like if you are using an open source project, you need to say to the communities that you are using it uh, to spread the good news. 
Uh, the second point is accessibility. So you want to make your code available. And uh, to do that, you want to share codes with your paper. So for me, I, I have done it during my PhD and I would invite uh, every PhD student to try to do so, to, to share code, or even better to share it within the existing framework to just uh, foster the contribution. What is important also is to build a community. So meaning that you can support each other uh, within a project. And as you can think, it's really hard to have people uh, contribute to an open source project. And uh, the goal with OpenMVG is to foster reproducible research, so meaning that I want uh, an emulation between the community uh, from the academia and the community from the uh, companies. What is also hard is to have everything very fast in your library. So meaning that sometimes you have to do trade off between I want my code to be really readable by anyone. I want to have it very accurate. Uh, so perhaps it's not going to be fast. So every time you have to do trade off. In OpenMVG, often we are taking the trade off of having something very easy to read, easy to maintain, and easy to pass by someone else. And finally, what is uh, also opportunity is the relevance of the contribution. So meaning that it's really hard to just keep contribution aligned with what people need because it's changing every time. And one opportunity that the community can leverage today is uh, to align the interests of the machine learning community and the SFM community. Because there is a lot of emulsion around, can we find better features, for example, for matching images? Uh, here, I will uh, just cite uh, Mark Eder as an example. Uh, so Mark just finished his PhD uh, and made many contributions in the field of uh, mitigating distortion for spherical image. And he's now working on um, implementing his work uh, to the open image library. Uh, and his work is uh, mainly on uh, mitigating distortion for 360 image. Uh, one way he found to deal with this um, distortion factor is to use the right uh, interpretation uh, for mitigating distortion. So if you look for a cubic representation, uh, you extract a face uh, on each side of the cube. Uh, if you use tangent images, uh, you start to make the cube look like a sphere, and you can use different uh, subdivision of this sphere. So what is the impact? Uh, if you use a cube, uh, you're going to see that the inner and outer um, area is very large. So meaning that you're going to have non-uniform distortion uh, when you want to extract uh, a face of the cube. But if you look on the right, uh, by using uh, tangent images, you're going to have distortions that are less important, just because the separation between the inner and outer area around the circle is just smaller. So you're going to have less distortion. And why is it better? It's just because somehow it's like you think you want to adapt the representation of the image and use the existing algorithm. So meaning that if you have a good algorithm that run on existing image, but don't really uh, extend to spherical image, uh, using tangent image, you can still apply your algorithm and be able to see the output on spherical images. Here, I will just show you an example uh, where you see on the left, uh, SIFT just run on a spherical image. So as you can see, there is a lot of clutter, like uh, some points should not be there. And just because you are running SIFT um, with assumptions that does not exist on the spherical image. Uh, on at the right, uh, you see that SIFT was run on tangent images and merged back uh, to the equi rectangular image. As you see that there is less points, they are uh, better uh, aligned with the image. And uh, what we, our point here is like using SIFT on tangent image and uh, would be better to do spherical image matching and SFM. So what's next uh, for OpenMVG also on, in some other direction? Like we want to be more scalable, so meaning we want more speed for users. And we want to do that for image matching, for example, or new SFM pipelines. And one of the ideas we're going to explore is to use um, Stellar SFM, so meaning that you can use uh, NView initialization to do uh, structure for motion or global uh, structure for motion. And we would like also to um, uh, gather the help from the community and allow interest uh, of the machine learning and computer vision communities. Now let's look about how people are using OpenMG. Look about what are the alternatives of OpenMG. Does there is other frameworks? And uh, let's gather around the take-home message. 
So those two examples show how OpenMVG can be used by some laboratory uh, to just uh, build uh, 3D cities uh, from image collected by airplanes or from the ground. Uh, here is one example with a digital humanities laboratory. On the right, you see an example where OpenMVG is used inside an Android app uh, called Scan3D. So meaning that SFM can run on your phone uh, directly with the image you can capture. Some other image that were totally um, unexpected is like OpenMVG can be used either for forensic reconstruction, so meaning that uh, with uh, human um, heads, for example, or even to try to save animals and uh, to do 3D printed prosthetics. So meaning that you can take image of uh, injured animals and after add a prosthetic that perfectly fit uh, the nose of this token, for example. Some other example can be done in the field of surveying or science dissemination. Uh, so for example, for this survey, um, one company called 8K Images, 8,000 images of a castle, and uh, they were able to build a very, very nice model of the castle uh, to do um, explanation about the castle. As you can see here, you can see all the details about the roof, about the side of the castle. Here are some other examples where you see uh, with um, green dots, the camera poses, and on the right, uh, one part uh, of the top of the roof. You can notice that there is a lot of details and that you see a lot of uh, very good alignments of the point cloud. Here is another example uh, where you can see um, an archaeologic survey uh, for stone degradation monitoring. So here is also a big data set uh, that was used uh, by the community uh, to just share uh, a reconstruction of the uh, environment. Now, if we look about uh, other alternatives, like there is a lot of projects to do open source SFM uh, in the web. Uh, but uh, here I was trying to do a classification um, to show that it's hard to gather contributors uh, and contribution in this field. So meaning that our community is very big, like there is a lot of people working on studio construction, slab, SFM, but somehow we don't all share uh, content and knowledge to the community. And OpenMVG is one of the projects that is gathering uh, most of the contributors today. And perhaps it's because our project is really open, meaning that we uh, want to share knowledge and we want to just um, share implementation of state of the art. One other very important point is to have continuous integration, as you see on the right. So meaning that everyone that wants to do a contribution, you need to directly tell if the code is compiling, if the code is running nicely, because else you're gonna just give feedback and say, hey, your code is not compiling, please do that or this. So as what is very important is to give feedback as soon as you can to your users that the code is gonna be good, or that some modification are required to be integrated in the library. As a take home message, uh, I would like you to remember that OpenMVG is a flexible framework for possible research. So meaning that we have implemented a lot of state of the art uh, algorithms that you can use directly. I want you to remember that there is also easy inter inter interoperability so meaning that the SFM data container used in OpenMVG is very, very powerful and allow you to do customization in a very, very easy way. There is a lot of convenient import and export functions. So meaning that you can import data sets, uh, do evaluation uh, compared to them, or you can export to other third party tools. And finally, I want to say that this project is very community and knowledge focused. Uh, so it's like together we can achieve more. Uh, so please uh, consider to join the project uh, if you like studio construction. And I would like to give a very, very uh, big thank you to the Open Energy community because the project would not be there uh, without them. Uh, so it, this is the end of my talk. Um, and now feel free to ask me questions. Okay. Thank you very much for Dr. Pierre Mollens. Uh, fantastic talk and uh, Pierre has set up a very good example for all the PhD students who needs to sh who should share their code, make their code public and for the community. And uh, we have some questions from the general audience. Um, let's say the first question is, do you want to, I believe right now you have some functions in, in Python already in, in OpenMGV and uh, MVG and uh, 
one audience is asking whether you are planning to implement a full Python version of OpenMVG, or is there any a plan to add other direct method, and uh, for example, dtime, lsd, slime, and to OpenMVG? Yeah, so my answer is uh, going to be, if you want something, uh, come in the project and help us to make it true. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, there is an automatic wrapper that exists to just uh, make C++ code available from Python. So we could try to play with that together and see how far we can go. Um, using the SFM data container as a file that you can log on and disk and just interact with it, it's already a first step where you can mix uh, C++ and uh, Python pipelines together. Uh, but I'm like I'm very um, welcoming. So it's like if, if people want to help to build Python wrapper or just extend some part of the interface, uh, I will be really happy to help. And uh, one other point I want to to say here is like somehow we see that there is different language to write computer vision. Like you can use Python, C++, Java, whatever. And uh, one of my other dream is to say you write something only once and you just translate it to the language you want. Uh, so it would be a, a very nice dream that one day we could achieve. So meaning that you write an algorithm once and after you can just export it to any language. Okay, great. Um, another question is, um, so how do you maintain your proje project over time? I think I can, I can merge the, those two questions together from the audience. Uh, and uh, and uh, do you maintain your open MGV and other open source uh, framework at work, or you just use your own free, free time on weekends and night to maintain them. Then how do you maintain your open MGV, MVG, sorry. Yeah, thank you for this question. It's uh, so like often open source is done on uh, free time. Um, and here I'm doing open MVG on, on my free time. And as you can see, the release has spread over, like now it's one year, uh, over one year. Uh, yes, it's taking time to maintain uh, open MVG, open source project. Uh, first is because it's, you have to concentrate, you have to write code, and you have to keep a, a good work-life balance, so meaning that you will no, not spend the entire night on coding, uh, you need also to rest. Um, so it's really hard to maintain an open source project in time. I'm very glad that I got a lot of uh, major contributors in the library that really helped me and uh, empower the project with really nice tools. Uh, I could cite them, uh, like Romuald Perrault and uh, Romain Janvier are two, two big contributors that really helped me. Uh, so at the end, I would say that to maintain an open source project in time, it's very uh, nice to have some guidelines, so meaning that the credo, vision, and mission I used, uh, to just be sure that you are sticking to what you want to build. Uh, you have to welcome uh, any contribution and to be fair to anyone, so meaning that you can have uh, questions, you can have contributions, you have to welcome everyone uh, with the same spirit um, to just uh, build and foster a very good community. Okay, and another question is, um, does OpenMVG provide ways to marry the accuracy and uncertainty of different SFM algorithms? Uh, so I don't provide uncertainty. Uh, there is one tool uh, that is called Evaluate Quality uh, to just compare camera position uh, in rotation and translation uh, for many GT datasets. Uh, but for the moment, we don't compute uncertainty. Uh, we could add it because it's a function of a serious solver, or we could use other tools. And here again, I would like to welcome anyone uh, to do this as a contribution uh, to the library. Okay, and how do you manage the different versions of, of C++, C++, 11, 14, and later many, many other versions? Yes, so for the moment, OpenMVG is very conservative, uh, so meaning that we are using C++ 11 as a standard. And uh, the main reason is because we want to keep up with uh, compilers that are going on phones. So meaning that if you want to use OpenMVG on iOS or Android, uh, most of the compiler for those platforms accept C++11, uh, but they don't uh, all accept uh, higher standard. Uh, so for the moment, we are just uh, using C++11, and we are okay with that, uh, but we think that one day we, we're going to need to switch to access to more features. Okay, um, so uh, some follow-up questions from me is, you mentioned you are going, you are, you are you are paying attention to the machine learning community and the, and the geometry uh, uh, structure for motion community. And the, yeah, 
does it uh, indicate in the future you will include many other uh, open source code and for, for deep learning based uh, solution for SFM or in another thing, do you think in the future SFM based on deep learning will mainly play a more important or, dominant, or even a dominant role in the future? Yeah, this is a, a very good question. Uh, and for me, what matters is to keep what is working the best in each field. So meaning that there is geometric methods that are working very good. And there is some machine learning algorithms that are working very good. And we should just mix them in a very smart way. Uh, so meaning that if there is very good machine learning uh, features detector, we should use them uh, because they could be better than SIFT or ACASE. Um, and on the other part, uh, regarding if SFM is going to switch to be um, totally done uh, with machine learning, uh, perhaps it's going to be done one day. I think what is really hard is to deal with wide baseline. Uh, so meaning that all the machine learning work we are seeing on SLAM uh, and SFM are, are just not working really great uh, for the moment for very wide baseline. Uh, they are working great for very small motion. Uh, and uh, one of the opportunities is to how to work with very large uh, high resolution images. So meaning that a lot of machine learning models are ingesting very small resolution images. So it's like how we can go to the next step and just use very, very large resolution images. Because if you think today, when people are doing a survey of a building or of, uh, uh, an object, they are using their DSLR and they are taking very, very large high resolution images. So it's like how you can use uh, those very large resolution um, images uh, inside your machine learning models is also a very good opportunity and how to mix them with SFM is a, another good opportunity. Yeah, that, that is great. That is great answer. And I be, in, in the morning, actually, uh, in Daniel Kramer's uh, talk, and he also mentioned in current SLAM or structure for motion solution, uh, traditional algorithms, geometry-based uh, algorithms do uh, in some way place um, Better perform, get better performance than the machine, machine learning based uh, algorithms for deep learning based algorithms, especially for, for the trajectory estimation. So I would say, say, say probably your answer is, 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 pretty, is pretty straightforward and decent is, is you probably in the future, a combination between these two and the uh, geometry based and the machine learning based would, would benefit each other in a long time. And uh, it's unlike some other domain and probably deep learning algorithm is already uh, taking over all the, all the best performance in, the, in, in some tasks like segmentation, detection, those things. Um, so probably for the last question is um, for OpenMGV and the, what do you think you mentioned in the one of your slides, OpenMVG attracts most the contributors. What do you think is the reason uh, behind it? that open MVG attract more contributors compared with others is because it provides more uh, function or is more open or, or provides more flexibility? Yes, so for me, I would say the transparency. So first, like uh, we welcome anyone in the community and we try to maintain feedback with them. So it's like uh, if you open the issue on GitHub, we try to give an answer and it's taking a lot of time, uh, but it's rewarding that if one day someone is want to do a contribution, you help and guide him. Uh, it's very uh, a nice uh, feeling. Uh, so what I would say why there is more contributors is for this, uh, just the hard work we are doing uh, to be a community and welcome anyone. And the second one is what you cite. It's um, try to implement a lot of algorithm and be sure they are running as they should uh, with test drive and development. So meaning that every time there is some features, you can directly know how to test them uh, by looking to the unit test, or you can try to implement your own method and to compare with some ex existing algorithm. Cool. Um, so probably there will be more uh, questions from the from the audience, and uh, we are uh, right at the time. So let's turn to to the to Dr. Pierre Pierre uh, Pierre Monton again, and uh, for his great talk. And uh, and uh, maybe you can you can interact with the with audience on the YouTube and the YouTube channel, and maybe they have more questions. Thank okay. You.